Let's talk about antidepressant medications and how they work. If you're new to my channel, I'm Rachel, the neuroscientist. The most commonly prescribed antidepressant medications in psychiatry are SSRIs or selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Now, the crude way of explaining that from doctor to patient is that it will increase levels of serotonin, but it's slightly more complex and let's talk about why. So what you have to remember is serotonin is a chemical messenger in the brain. It's a tool that brain cells use to talk to each other. So you have brain cell one and it wants to send a signal to brain cell two. It releases serotonin and that serotonin will sit between these two brain cells in the synaptic cleft and it can act on receptors on brain cell two and elicit all sorts of different mechanisms. Serotonin is very complicated. Now, the serotonin that remains between those two brain cells will be collected up and repackaged for another day, let's say. What SSRIs do is they delay that process. So they act on the machinery that collects up that serotonin and repackages it. So what it's doing is it's spending more time between brain cells and it has more of a chance to act on the receptors and do its thing. Okay, so why does that have an impact? Researchers used to believe it's because serotonin has a direct impact on mood regulation. More recent studies suggest that it might be something more complicated. Serotonin certainly is involved in mood, but it's involved in everything in the brain. It does everything. It's also a neuromodulator, so it will change the activity of brain cells. It's involved in plasticity, meaning the building and strengthening of synapses. We know, for example, from studies that many people who meet the diagnostic criteria for depression have normal levels of serotonin. Depression isn't a deficiency of serotonin, and so we think that maybe it might be related to mechanisms of plasticity. That would explain why in the patients who see a benefit to SSRIs, there's still a delay period between starting the medication and seeing that benefit. The truth is though, there's a lot that we don't know about how those antidepressant medications actually improve symptoms for folks who have depression. We just know that they work for roughly 50% of patients. How effective are antidepressant medications in treating depression? Now, the first thing I'll say about this is I am just a lowly scientist. It's not for me to advocate for or discourage the use of any pharmaceutical intervention. The only thing I can do is speak to the research. But broadly speaking, antidepressant medications are effective in roughly 50% of cases. Let's be more specific. First, on the left-hand side, we have 100 people who are given a placebo. And of those 100 people, about 20 to 40 will report feeling better after taking that placebo. On the right hand side, we have 100 people treated with an antidepressant medication and about 40 to 60 of those will report feeling better. We also have to consider relapse back to depressive symptoms and that's shown in this graphic. Of every 100 people given a placebo, about 50 of those will relapse back to depression within the next two years. While 100 people treated with an antidepressant, about 23 of those will relapse in the next two years. It's not for me to decide whether that's good news or bad news, whether that makes it suitable for you or not. It's absolutely a conversation between you and your doctor and a decision that you should take for yourself.